On June 2011, I've been back to the place where I was born in Siberia. It was my first time after eight years being away from my home. In this voyage, I discovered so many miracle places that I didn't know before that became a revelation for me about this country. I'll try to describe about one of them from my point of view. The road to the heart of Russian Buddhism, Ivalginsky Datsan, starts in Ulan Ude, 100 kilometers due east of Lake Baikal. Datsan was approved as the center of Buddhist worship in the Soviet Union in 1946. Today, Ivalginsky Datsan is a complex of temples and residences that includes an accredited university. Pilgrims begin their visit by walking a clockwise path around the Datsan and placing coins in collection boxes and spinning mountain prayer wheels of all shapes and sizes. Unique samples of old Buryat art are stangas known as silk painting, sculptures, ritual objects are gathered and preserved at the Ivalginsky Datsan. Among the monastery's treasures, there is a collection of old Buddhist manuscripts written in Tibetan language on natural silk. Datsan became a sanctuary for the body of the 12th Pandido Hambalama, Dashado Zho Itegelov, who served as the spiritual leader of Russian Buddhism from 1911 to 1917. Etigelov was born in 1852 and began his religious education at the age of 16. In 1911 he was appointed Hambalama, a post he used to institute a Buddhist revival among Buryats. Ten years later, Itigelov warned his students about the coming terror. He then sat down to meditate and passed into another state, leaving his body behind. In other words, he began chanting the prayer of death and died mid-meditation. He was 75 years old and he promised to return to his followers after another 75 years. The humble Amma's body was buried sitting upright in the lotus position. It was exhumed twice. Both times they found the body perfectly preserved. His limbs were still flexible and his skin was elastic. The most amazing thing is that he was still sitting upright. On September 2002, he was exhumed again and brought to Ivalginsky Datsan, where it was decided to exhibit Itigelov's body to help spread the faith. Professor Viktor Zvagin examined Itigelov's body and concluded that his body was in the condition of someone who had died 36 hours ago. We've been said that we were lucky to witness the removal of Itigelov from his residence to the main temple. It was strange feeling during the ritual as some of us had the urge to cry. Others had a very sharp headaches. And then suddenly I felt calm and relaxed.
We had a chance to visit and see him close up. He was elevated above our heads, and his look yearned to distance, even though he didn't have facial detail. Inside the temple is a riot of colors with painting dragons spiraling up columns and hundreds of portraits and statues of the Buddha in various incarnations. Outside the temple, hundreds of people were waiting to visit Itigelov. The celebration gained power and became exciting and interesting. Lots of young people tried their strengths during competition of wrestling, archery and Buryat national combat. All the people were busy on dancing roundly and singing songs. All people, from younger to older, were together under the same roof and celebrating one of the most important events of their lives. One holy man merges different generations to return presents, a great opportunity to help people believe. How much you have to love people to leave your body for them. <laughs>